Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Now, Matt. That's it. Uh, I've got it. Almost. Ah! There it is, yes. <laughs> well, yeah, a little piece of lead. Just as we thought. You see? Well, it took you long enough, Doc. Now, nah, don't you blame me. You should have come here before. People never do go to a doctor until the last minute. I've carried that lead in my leg for over a year, Doc. It never did bother me any. The only reason I came up here today is because you weren't busy and I didn't have anything else to do myself. Aren't you through yet? No, I'm not through yet. I'm looking for my needle. I've got to take a couple of stitches in it first. <laughs> oh, yes. And if you're <laughs> talking like that just to get my fee down, you're wasting your time. You know, it, it's when I'm not busy that I'm poor and I have to charge more. Ah, yeah. oh, there. Now, that ought to hold you fine. Not much of a wound. It let it work right up next to the skin. I could have cut it out myself. Yeah, but you didn't. And <laughs> it's going to cost you $5. Five dollars. Well, you're the only patient I've had today. I gotta make out somehow. Oh, well, hand me my pants, Doc. How is he, Doc? Oh, he'll live, Chester. Worse luck. Uh, say, there's a fellow in the office downstairs who wants to see you, Mr. Dillon. Oh, who is it, Chester? He didn't say. All right. I'm ready. Uh, we'll finish our discussion at supper, if you like, Doc. Well, there's nothing to discuss, but I'll eat with you anyhow. <laughs> Thanks. See you later. Marshal Dillon? I am. My name's Parker. I'm a special deputy representing the New Mexico Stock Raisers New Association. New Mexico? Of course. Haven't you heard of the association? Uh, yeah, I've heard of it. I was just thinking you're a long way from home, aren't you? Perhaps. Marshal, I have a warrant here for the arrest of Dane Shaw. Dane Shaw. I never heard of that name around here. We'll let the Marshal handle this, if you don't mind. Oh, we will, huh? Well, now, you're a pretty high and mighty for just a... Just a easy, on... Chester, easy. Here's the warrant, Marshal. Who issued this, Mr. Parker? We had Judge Blanta Santa Fe issue it. You had him issue it? Well, no. What I mean is we... Uh, well, uh, uh, read it. Read it. Yeah. Uh, it's got the judge's name on it and its seal. That looks okay to me. What makes you think this Dane Shaw's in Dodge? I didn't say I thought he was in Dodge. You're the one looking for help, mister, not me. It's a warrant, and you're a marshal. And we think Dane Shaw may be in or near Tascosa. Tascosa? That's a long ride from here, Mr. Parker. Isn't there someone closer than I am? No, I was told to deliver the warrant here. I see. Oh, what's this Shaw wanted for, anyway? Rustling, murder... Banditry. All of that? He once rode with Billy the Kid. Does that explain it? Not quite, Mr. Parker. We hold those men equally responsible. Every one of them. We? The Stock Racers Association and others. Ah, I see. Now, you say Shaw once rode with the Kid. Do you mean he isn't still with him? Shaw left the gang just two years ago. Who told you he did? Pat Garrett. Pat Garrett? Well, if he said so, it's probably true. We've got to put a stop to that gang, Marshal. New Mexico is like an armed camp till we do. But Shaw isn't with a kid anymore. He's of the same breed. And he'll be back, maybe with his own gang. Yeah, that's possible. 
In any case, the man's wanted and you have the warrant. Why don't you come down to Tascosa with us, Mr. Parker? <laughs> no, no, that's not my job. I'll wait right here in Dodge. Yeah, I thought so. Any idea what Dane Shaw looks like? Six feet, black hair, about 180 pounds. That's not much help. Anything else? They say he has a knife scar across his ribs on the left side. Well, that's something. Where's he from? Who knows where any of those men come from? They all lie, anyway. Why, they say Billy the Kid claims to have been born in New York. Well, maybe he was. Oh, nonsense. How do you know? Well, I was born in New York, for one thing. And you couldn't both have come from the same town. I'd hate to think so, Marshal. <clears throat> all right, Mr. Parker, you keep nice and cozy here in Dodge, and we'll ride down to Tascosa for you. Now, Marshal, I don't think that's quite called for Chester, after... go get our horses. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Tascosa lay on the Canadian River a couple of hard days' ride south. Until recently, it had been a Comanchero trading point. Now it was mostly a center for cattle thieves looking for a place to spend their money. I hadn't been there for several years, and when we rode in, I was surprised to see how much the town had grown. Now, at least they got some trees down here, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, and a couple of new buildings under them, Chester. Looks like there's another one being started. Mm, it's going to be a big one, too. Doesn't look like a house, though. I wonder what it is. Oh, we can ask in the saloon over there. <laughs> the Red Deer. That's a pretty fancy name. Maybe we can find out if there are any respectable citizens in this town. There don't seem to be anybody here at all, sir, respectable or otherwise. How about that? Oh. I sure could use a drink, Mr. Dillon. Well, I figure we've earned one. Beer. Oh, Mr. Dillon. <laughs> one beer, one whiskey. Right. There, now. That's the best-looking thing I've seen yet in this town. Here's how. Uh, Tascosa's changed some. <coughs> you been there before? Yeah, uh, some time ago. Uh, what's the new building they're putting up? Hmm? Oh, that's going to be a schoolhouse. A schoolhouse? In Tascosa? There's a few men who moved into town with their families. Kids need a school, so it was Nat, of course, got it organized. Nat? Nat Temple. He owns the Red Deer here. Oh, I see. I see. He uh, must be sort of the leading citizen here, then, huh? In most ways, I suppose he is. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I'd like to talk to him. Where is he? Out back, building a fence. Door's right there. Oh, thanks. There's your money. See you later. Sure. Hello, Mr. Temple. Matt Temple. I'm Matt Dillon, and uh, this is Chester Proudfoot. I'm glad to know you. Barkeep told us that we'd find you out here. Yes, yeah, Mike Parsley, good boy. I gathered from him that uh, you were the right fellow to come to, Mr. Timble. What can I do for you? Well, uh, I'm looking for a man. You are? Why? I'm a U.S. Marshal, Dodge City. We don't get the law down here often, Marshal. No. man I'm looking for is Dane Shaw. Do you know him? Nobody by that name around here? Oh, I expect he's changed his name. Well, then how are you going to tell him from anybody else? Uh, he's six foot tall, black hair, weighs 180 pounds. Could be most anybody, that built. He's got a scar across his ribs. It isn't often you see a man without a shirt, Marshal. What do you want it for? He used to ride with Billy the Kid. He quit, but they think he might be planning to return to New Mexico with a different bunch, one of his own, maybe. Then it'd be better to stop him now, if that's true. Oh, I agree. That's why I'm here. Well, wish I could help you, Marshal. What are you going to do? Well, I don't know. Stay around for a day or so, I guess. Maybe I'll hear something. Fine. 
You know, it'd be too bad since that fella quit the kid if he went back to the same old outlaw life. Sure. But he probably will. Men don't often change. Some do, if they get the chance. Take Mike Postelton there, the, the barkeep. No? What about him? Uh, Mike used to carry a gun for Harry Gunter. Gunter calls himself a rancher down here, but he spreads a mighty big loop. You mean he's really a cattle rustler? I mean, everybody knows it, but nobody's proved it yet. And one reason was because of Mike. He sort of kept everybody off, Gunter. How? Mike Postel's pretty fast with a gun. I see. How come he's tending bar for you, Temple? Well, I'll tell you. He have decided himself to stop working for Gunter, and one night he was telling me about it, and I helped him decide the rest of the way. Ah. And then you gave him a job, huh? That's right, Marshal. He'll make out fine if Gunter lets him alone. Well, that was decent of you, Temple. I hope it works. But being a lawman, I suppose you don't think it will. <laughs> well, a lawman isn't all bone, Mr. Temple. A lawman could arrest... Mike Postel right now for what he's done. You can't arrest everybody. But anyway, if I were handling it, I'd go after the head man, Gunter. <laughs> they don't seem to think you're way over in New Mexico. Well, I hear Pat Garrett's after Billy right now, and you'll get him with any luck at all. Pat's a good manhunter. Maybe. But they also want this fellow Dane Shaw. Yeah, there's a warrant for him signed in Santa Fe. Yeah. If Pat does stop Billy, there's no point in letting Shaw come back with a new gang. If that's what he aims to do. Well, he might have it in mind. Well, Marshal, that's your problem. Right now, come on inside and have a drink on the house. Oh, thanks, Mr. Temple. It'll be a pleasure. And then I'll tell you where you can get something to eat that won't poison you. I'm saying, I think I'm going to like Tascosa after all. Sure you are. Pretty good turkey, Mr. Dillon. You should have tried it. And they must have a Chinese cook in that place. It's better than the usual feed trough in a town like this. Mm. Yeah, let's sit here a while, Chester. All right. Just think, Mr. Yeah. Dillon. Someday Tascosa may be as big as St. Louis. <laughs> I doubt that, Chester. Well, as big as Dodge, then. Uh, that's a little more likely. Ah, here come some of the citizens now. They sure are. Looking for trouble and ain't even dark yet. Yeah, maybe they just want to cut the dust in their throats, Chester. Mean looking bunch, if you ask me. I'll do the talking, man. Okay, Gunner, we're behind you. If he ain't in here, we'll find him. Did he say Gunner? Yeah, he did, Chester. Come on, let's watch this. I didn't expect to... Over here, Chester. Yes, sir. You come here for a drink, gentlemen? No, Postal, we didn't come here for no drink. And state your business, Gunter. You're the first man ever walked out on me, Postal. I don't like it and I don't aim to tolerate it. Is that all? There's two reasons you're coming back. I'm not interested in your reasons, Gunter. One is I need your gun. I'm through selling my gun. And the other is you know too much about my business. Your business is your affair, Gunter. You know I don't talk. Maybe. But you're still coming back. That's so? Which one of you is going to bring me back? You're pretty handy with that six-shooter of yours, Postal. Ain't any one of us fool enough to go against you. That's about what I figured. But you can't shoot the whole bunch of us. Don't you sure try hard. And you'll die trying. I'm telling you, Postal, be back in camp a day after tomorrow. We ride in after you. Wait a minute, Gunner. What do you want, Timber? you caused enough trouble already. I ain't through yet. Gunner, if you come back here, you'll have to face me. As no, as Temple, Mike. no. Shut up, shut up, Mike. Now, just remember that, Gunner. I'll be here, too. And you'll both die. Come on, men. Who are those two? I never seen it before. Just a couple of grub line riders, I guess. Come on, Let's go up to the bar, Chester. Uh-huh. I have seen him, Marshal. That's Harry Gunner. Well, Gunner's not my business, but uh, 
I wish you luck with him. Mike and me will face him down. I'll face him, Temple, not you. No, I helped get you in this. By heaven, I'll see you through it. It's not your fight, I tell you. It's my fight. I believe any man who wants to make a change deserves all the back and anyone can give him. I'll see you get it. You'll just be killed for nothing. Besides, you're a married man. Being married has nothing to do with it. Maybe we'll both be killed, but that's better than giving in to a man like Gunter. Mike, I never told you going straight was easy. You should have been a preacher, Temple. I'm going to get my supper now. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> I'd make a fine preacher, I would. But if business don't pick up some here, maybe I'll have to give it a try. Well, the town's growing, Temple. Business ought to be good. Well, it's growing, Marshal, a little at a time. <laughs> when I first came here, there wasn't more than a couple of adobe huts to the whole place. When was that, Temple? Oh, when you first came here. One year and nine months exactly, Marshal. Now, if you'll excuse me, I got work to do. Let's get some air, Chester. All right. He's a mighty nice fellow, that Matt Timble, isn't he? I, I, I mean, willing to back up Mike Postel that way. He, he's a man of his word. And, and building a new school and all that. Married, too. Funny thing, Mr. Dillon, I can't quite figure out if you like Timble. I like him fine, Chester. Only his name isn't Timble. What? It's Dane Shaw. He's the man we're looking for. We will return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, tomorrow night on most of these same stations, CBS Radio presents Dick Powell in the role of Richard Diamond, private detective. Remember... Richard Diamond, private detective, calls on you via CBS Radio tomorrow night. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. The idea of taking a man like Nat Timble in and sending him back to New Mexico to face a jury of scared and vengeful cattlemen didn't sit too well with me. Anyway, I decided I had to wait it out at least until Harry Gunter made his play. Two days, Gunter had said. And the night before the final day, Temple asked Chester and me to a little dance they were having to celebrate the start of the new schoolhouse. And there we met Ms. Trimble. A fine-looking woman with a strong face and steady blue eyes. If you'd like some punch, gentlemen, my husband's serving it right over there. Uh, yes, sir, I'd enjoy sampling a little, ma'am. I'll be right back. Uh, Chester. Yes, sir? Huh? Oh, my goodness. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. I'd also enjoy fetching you a cup of that punch. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Chester, but I'll have some later. Well, sure, ma'am, any time. Uh, I'll be right back. I'd uh, be foolish not to take advantage of your husband's being busy, Miss Timble. Would uh, you do me the honor? No offense, Marshal, but I'd rather get a breath of air outside. Why, certainly, ma'am. Would you accompany me? <laughs> Why, of course. Nice evening. You think it'll hold, Marshal? Oh, it won't rain. Not for the next couple of days, anyway. That's not exactly what I meant. I was wondering how nice tomorrow evening will be. I, uh, afraid I don't quite follow, ma'am. After Harry Gunter and his gang ride in. Oh. Well, now, I wouldn't worry about that, Miss Timble. My husband's uh... involved, Marshal. I'm bound to worry. Of course. It's not that I don't want him to back Mike Postel and fight alongside him. He's got to do that. But I don't want him killed. He's the finest man that ever lived, Marshal. 
Yeah, sure, sure, Miss Timber. He believes that a man's got a right to change, and he's willing to die for that. I know. Tell me, do you think he's right, Marshal Dillon? In spite of what the law might say, do you think he's right? I think he's right, ma'am. I had a feeling you would. But uh, maybe things will work out all right tomorrow. Maybe everything will be fine. I hope so, Marshal. Anyway, I'll bring our son up to know his father for the rare kind of man he is. Oh? I didn't know you had a son. We haven't yet. What? I haven't even told Nat. But we're going to have one, Marshal. Oh, I see. Shall we go in now? And I'll be your partner for the next dance, if you like. What? I'd be proud, Miss Temple. Real proud. Next morning early, Chester and I saddled up and rode out past the edge of town to the south. There we pulled off the trail into a clump of scrub cedar and waited. Beyond us lay the Canadian River, and across it broad Vegas of spring-fed meadow grass. As we watched, a buffalo, cow, and calf came to the river and drank. And then they suddenly moved off upstream and disappeared in the mesquite. And a moment later, six horsemen came out of the distance, riding hard for the river and for Tascosa. I reckon that's him, Mr. Dillon. You, uh, don't have to do this, Chester. I know it. Any objections to me using a rifle? There are no rules in this game. I'll feel a mite cozier behind the wind, Chester. Eyes open, Chester. Yes, sir. Come on. All right, hold it, Gunner. Oh, who are you? I'm a U.S. Marshal. My name's Matt Dillon. Them's the fellows we thought was bums, Gunner, the other day at the Red Deer. Yeah. Get off the trail, Marshal. You got no business with us. Cut around and ride back where you came from, Gutter. Mike Postel's staying in Tascosa. Postel, eh? So you're in on this, too? I've dealt myself in, Gutter. Now do as I say. And keep away from Tascosa from now on, or I'll get a posse and come after the bunch of you. <laughs> we don't need any lawmen down here, Marshal. Who's that? It's Timble and Mike, Mr. Mike. Dillon. Yeah. How did they know we were out here? Looks like we won't have to go into Tascosa, Marshal. We can settle this right here. You were missing this morning, Marshal. I kind of figured we'd find you hereabouts. You and Temple both ought to stay out of this. This is my trouble. It's a little late for that now, Postal. Well, the odds are down, Gunter. They sure are. I ain't facing all them. Come on, Gunter. We'll catch Postal later when there ain't such a clock. Hey, we are. Not me. I'm going. Shut up. Timble, you're responsible for this. I'm proud of it, Gunter. Get him and Postal, men. Get Stop them. Stop it, Gunter! Stop it. Should we go after them three? No, let them go, Chester. They won't be back. Ah, oh, Temple's been hit. How is he, Marshal? He got hit bad. Chester, go see if Gunter and those other two are really dead. Yes, sir. I told him not to come along. He wouldn't listen to me. Here, let me pick him up and get him back to town. No. No, it's uh, no use. He, he's done for, Apostle. Are you sure? He was dead before he hit the ground. We finished him, sir. All three of them. It'd take more than three of them to be worth that temple. I'm sorry, Apostle. Done enough for me already. Why do you have to come here? This was my fight, not his. No, Apostle, not the way he looked at it. You see, Temple himself went straight a couple of years back. He did? Yeah. I came down here carrying a warrant for his arrest. You ain't gonna be able to take him in now, are you, Marshal? No, no, I'm not. You know, I'm kind of mixed up about you. 
Coming down here to arrest him and then meeting Gunner and them out here today. I'm not important, Postal. Just you remember what kind of man Temple was. I ain't likely to forget. I'll swear to that, Marshal. Good. Uh, look, you and Chester stay here. I'll send a wagon out from town. I, uh, I'm going in to see Ms. Tyndall. You'll be going back to Dodge now, Marshal? Yes, ma'am, I... I will. I want to thank you for trying to stop it. It's my job. No, not quite. Well, I guess Mike will have to run things now. He's a good man. He'll make out fine. Sure. Tell me one thing, Marshal. Yes, ma'am. I know you came here to arrest my husband. Uh, I figured you did. If this hadn't happened today, would you really have taken him back? <sighs> Miss Temple, I, I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing. If I had, it would have been my last act as a lawman. You mean you'd have quit after? I'd have quit. If you're around in Tascosa again, Marshal, come and see us. Me and the baby. I... I'd be proud to, ma'am. Real proud. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were John Daner and Tom Tully, with Harry Bartell, Paul Dubov, Helen Cleeb, and James M Nusser. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Armed Forces Radio Service to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Tennessee and Virginia are the home states for CBS Radio's Saturday Night Country Style just a bit later tonight. That's where the rural rhythm's coming from, but it's going out all over the country on most of these same stations. This is George Walsh speaking, and remember, you'll find Western adventure and music with Gene Autry Sunday evenings on the CBS Radio Network. Mm -hmm.